So hello and welcome to this joint podcast between Podmedics and Kumar and Clark on tuberculosis. This podcast is brought to you in association with Kumar and Clark's Medical Management and Therapeutics, published by El Sevier. In this podcast on TB, we're going to talk about a basic definition of TB, the different types of infection, and then we're going to look at some diagnostic and treatment strategies. So let's kick off with a good definition. Tuberculosis is a systemic granulomatous disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. The most important epidemiology to know is that this is a disease that is most common in developing countries. However, due to increased incidence of the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome and immunosuppressive drugs and indeed migration, the incidence of TB is rising in developed countries. Transmission of TB occurs via the aerosol route and the lung is the most common site of infection by far. There are three different types of infection, which I'm just going to talk about very briefly. There's primary TB, post-primary TB, and disseminated TB. Primary TB is the first infection with TB and tends to occur in those without immunity. It is usually subpleural, and a small lung lesion known as a gonfocus may be seen in the mid and upper zones within about four weeks of infection. Hyalin lymphadenopathy is often also present. In terms of symptoms, primary TB is most often asymptomatic. However, patients may complain of a mild cough, wheeze, and sometimes rare things such as erythema nodosum are seen. The bacilli of TB, however, will continue to proliferate and spread until there is an effective cell-mediated immune response, and this tends to take about three to eight weeks. At this point, the spread of infection is arrested and a tuberculin skin test, if it was performed on the patient, would be positive. Tubercle bacilli then remain dormant within calcified lesions, but are capable of reactivation. So that's primary TB in a nutshell. Let's now talk about post-primary TB. Post-primary TB is a catch-all term for all types of TB that occur after the first few weeks of infection after immunity to TB has developed. It occurs due to reactivation of those previously dormant focus. This tends to happen in patients who have coexistent problems such as HIV, diabetes, kidney disease, or malnutrition. Common symptoms of post-primary TB are your classical productive cough, fever, night sweats, and weight loss. Lastly, Let's just mention briefly disseminated TB. This occurs when there is unchecked proliferation and spread of the bacteria. One example of disseminated TB is miliary TB, which may be seen on a chest x-ray and resembles multiple millet seeds. So let's move on now to talk about diagnosis. Diagnosis in TB can be quite tricky, but there are five important modalities to be aware of. These are sputum staining, transbronchial biopsies, culture, pleural fluid and biopsies, and finally imaging. And we're going to now talk about each of these in turn. Let's start with sputum staining. The classical things seen here are acid fast bacilli seen on a Zeal Nielsen stain. However, Sputum can also be stained using oramine phenol fluorescent tests. Transbronchial biopsies are a useful technique in the diagnosis of tuberculosis as they allow both a histological and microbiological assessment. Granulomas are the diagnostic sign. Culturing TB can be fairly challenging and culture can be achieved either on Ogawa or Lowenstein Jensen medium that typically takes four to eight weeks. As part of any culture, of course, antibiotic sensitivities should always be included. Pleural fluid and biopsy is something that students often don't talk about, but can be incredibly useful. For example, pleural fluid tends to be positive in about 40% of cases of people with TB and biopsy of the pleura is diagnostic in about 60%. You may also wish to remember that in the pleural fluid, adenosine deaminase may be elevated. 
Finally, and perhaps a diagnostic test that people will be most familiar with, is imaging. The classical chest x-ray of a patient presenting with tuberculosis should not be forgotten. You can see an example of one here, and the classical things to look for are upper lobe infiltrates and cavitation. So, let's move on now to talk about the treatment of TB. First, some principles. Multiple drugs are often required in treatment. These require regular and correct doses for a sufficient period. Generally, we divide up the treatment of TB into an initial phase and a continuation phase. In the initial phase, we give four drugs for two months, and the typical regime is rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. In the continuation phase, that starts after drug sensitivities are known, typically after six to eight weeks, we give two sensitive drugs for four months. Some important considerations and different drug regimes occur in pregnancy and for the treatment of extra pulmonary TB. In pregnancy, women should be given standard treatment. However, pyrazinamide and streptomycin should be avoided. Patients can breastfeed normally while on anti-TB medication. In nearly all cases of extra pulmonary TB, the treatment regime is given for a longer period of time. Monitoring and follow-up of patients with TB is very important and patients often have contact with both specialist TB nurses and health visitors. They require regular blood tests as many of the drugs and indeed TB itself can cause alterations in renal and liver function. Patients who are positive for TB on culture will require regular one to two weekly sputum exams until they are negative and then they go on to a monthly monitoring regime. So in summary, in this brief podcast we've looked at the different types of TB and some basic epidemiology. We then looked at the management principles including diagnosis and treatment. Extra topics which you may wish to study for yourself include the treatment of drug resistant organisms, a problem that is becoming more frequent nowadays as well as the treatment of individuals who have been in contact with patients who have proven TB, a topic that is referred to as chemoprophylaxis. So, many thanks for listening to this podcast, and see you again soon.